everybody, Jody Marketplace Boutique, and today I'm going to show you how to use custom SKUs on eBay. Hopefully you are using your custom SKUs. I guess if you didn't have a lot listed, it's probably not a big deal. I have, uh, I think, probably around 5,000 items on eBay, so I need to know where they're located. <laughs> it's definitely a must. Let me show you how to use a custom eBay SKU. And this is where it's located. And I just pulled up the items that I want to revise right now. And once a month, when there's so many days old, I revise things or I revise them if stuff is getting too full or if I have too many hard goods. Like right now, my large salad bin is very big. So that's definitely one I probably want to revise. So on the first of the month, I always mark down my items. Every item that has been for sale for six months gets marked down. If I have bins that are just really, really full or hard goods, then I mark those down too. Okay, so that makes sense. Now, if you do not see your SKU right here, then go to custom table. If you click on that, you will see under the available options custom SKU label right here and then just click on that and save. And that will save it for you and then it should be on there. If I didn't have this custom SKU, it would really make my job a big nightmare. I used to put my SKUs right in the templates and that's how I kept track of everything. I did contact eBay and say, hey, you know, I used to work at a law firm and we had SKUs and we really need these here on eBay to keep track of like how old something is so we can mark them down, but also where our inventory is located, which is super, super important. You do not want to sell something and then cannot be able to find it. That's like the worst eBay thing that could ever happen. There's no worse feeling on eBay than not being able to find something. Once a month, I go in here. I will go to the custom SKU, and what I'll do is I sort my items fixed price because my auctions are pretty much things that have been in my store for a while or just like cheaper things that I just throw up there if I have them. So I would sort things by fixed price if you want to change the prices in bulk. Um, if you go over here, here's your custom SKU label. Make sure you bring the contains down. So it, six months ago was 821. So that's what I did, and I just kind of chose like 50 of them. I have a ton of them this month. I've already changed some of them. And so then I'm going to go in here and click this, and we are going to edit. The nice thing is eBay has made it available to change your SKUs right here in the listing. So if you click on this... then you'll be able to see that you can revise it and put like a like an inventory bin number on there so i keep my things and bins and boxes and everything is labeled my new inventory system that i have going on it's a whole separate room whole separate um skew systems all different bins and hard goods so moving forward i am doing something different okay so, you know, and if you want to quick change it, say you moved a bin and you just want to quick change it, it makes it super easy to just add which bin it is in. And I know this is in bin C because it's Capri's. <laughs> Not a lot of thought goes into some of these. <laughs> so this one is in like denim shorts. So you can just go DS denim shorts. Um, this will make it a lot easier, too, if you have somebody that is helping you pull items. Um, if I have really, really busy days, my husband does help me, and he'll come down and just... He doesn't even say anything. He's just real nice and starts pulling stuff for me that he can pull, and he'll pull up the list, and if it has a skew, he pulls it out. So that makes it super easy. I think if you are starting on eBay, you should start with this skew 
number because you do not want to be caught not having things organized. So if you go here, you can click on, you can edit your SKUs. Bulk editing is super nice. Okay, so when we bulk edit, this makes it super easy. I will just go into here when I want to reduce my prices. I usually just pay attention to the top one and make sure I know how much this was. Edit fields, price, buy it now price, decrease by. This is another thing that I brought up with eBay and I did implement. And I'm going to go $1. I have been in finance for many years before eBay. So they usually take um, into effect what I say and a lot of times they'll implement my wants usually within like a day or two. It's, they've been really good about that. And oh, I sure do appreciate the easier flow here. So I'm going to decrease this by a dollar. Okay. And I was in charge of financial policies too. Um, so I, I guess I always just think about what I could do to make things easier. Okay, so that did work. It went down from 14 to 13. Yay. Okay, so then we're going to go over here. And so what I do is I just, um, I'll just delete this. So I'm going to just delete this. So, I mean, you can do whatever numbers you want. I just go by months and and that's how I work my items. So now I'm going to go to 222 because it's February of 22. And then I'm going to copy. So then what I do is just highlight this on the next row and then I paste over it. And it's so easy. So the only thing I can say with, you know, my own things is I don't care what date it is when I have an EX on it. I know that's so old that I will continue to keep marking this down. And a lot of times, if it's something that's even like out of season, I will mark it down more vigorously than six months. So this just tells me it's been for sale. It might have been worth more, but, you know, but right now it has not sold. So it's still sitting there. So for me, I don't care what number I started with. Otherwise, if you go down to the next one, you will see here on my listing. So I started about a year ago. I do keep track of this. When it hits two years on eBay, that's when that gets the X. I mean, you can do whatever you want, though. You can keep the, the number in that you started with. But for me, this is what I just started doing, and that's what works for me. So if you do do it this way, you just want to make sure that you do not delete the first one. If I were to go in here and paste my SKU number over like the beginning, and this one hasn't been listed that long, so you just got to kind of watch what you're doing as you're doing it, but it is really super easy. And then I just keep going down. Sometimes eBay will skip around, and so you just want to make sure to check and take a look up and down the list again before you exit out that you have done them all. See how it just skipped. So then usually I just go to the end and just start working my way back up. But you definitely want to check your listings to make sure that they are all marked. And a lot of clothing does seem to just sit there on eBay. And I used to sell all used clothing. However, I do not usually pick up used clothing anymore. If I pick up clothing, it's usually new. Or sometimes people will give me clothing, which is awesome. I always like free clothing. <laughs> um, I also get used clothing, like if somebody is closing down. Sometimes people will contact me, or I kind of keep a watch on um, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. And I will buy, out, buy what they have. I used to go to the bins a lot, which I have not anymore. It just became too crazy there for me. Not that you cannot get good deals. You can. The new clothing seems to sell pretty quickly, but not as quick as like some of the fun hard goods. Now, hard goods, I usually get offers on pretty quickly. It might not be the offer I want, but at least, you know, there's some eyes on it and and watchers and all that. And then if it's just sitting too long and it's getting down to a point where, you know, 
I don't want to sell it for that price, then I will usually just put it at auction. You can also use auctions for things that you just want to park for a while and not relist it, like if it's out of season. Um, eBay usually has some free listings for that too, so that's kind of nice. People do give me offers on auctions, so I do have offers on all of my items, which works good, and sometimes somebody just wants it now. So here's one that, you know, wasn't listed that long ago, so I just gotta be careful not to delete the first number. Um, also, what I will do is I can search by EX, which, you know, you can, you can just put old or you know, long, long time or something like that. Um, you could just put long in there. <laughs> so you can search that custom label too. And what I do sometimes is I just mark all those things down again to try to keep moving them out. What you do not want is like really big bins that are really full. And I find that the older I get, the worse it becomes to try to handle the bigger bins. It's pretty much kind of impossible for me almost. That's why I have recently took up a different way of doing inventory to just do them in boxes instead, which works a lot better. And then I just made sure to put my SKU numbers in there. My newer stuff does have the SKU number in front which where it is located. And when something sells, you can organize that custom label according to the sold custom SKU. So here I'm just taking a look to make sure that I have all 50 listings done. Okay, so this I've got everything that I want and I want to submit changes. And really this goes a lot quicker if you're not talking and you're just in, in a quiet room just doing it. It goes really quickly. Okay, so there we go. Um, and also, just another little tip is when you want to go back in here and say you did the first page, but there's a second page, I would just search it again just to make sure you get those out of there and see the number went down. So this says I still have 467 um, listings to revise. However, um, as you can see here, like some of my SKUs I started on 821. So... You won't need to do all of them. And then here's my current one where I just revise the, the listing to cheaper. What I'll do is I go down, I usually just click, we'll click this, and then I'll go down and unclick all the ones that say 222 already. And then I will do that until they are all done. And I couldn't believe I had so many. I must have really been listing in August. Um, I don't usually do 200 at a time, but you can do up to 200 revisions at a time on eBay. And actually, you can do the whole list if you want to. I just find it too difficult. And if like the phone rings or something goes on and you walk away, then your listings might be completely voided out to where you have to start over again. I usually stick around 100 for that. For this tutorial, I did 50. I hope that helps you with SKUs. It's definitely so important. And if you're just starting out on eBay, I would definitely start using those SKUs and make sure that each bin that you put items in or whatever you're using, boxes, bins, or folders, filing cabinets, uh, what else have I used? I think that's about it. Or shelving units too, that you have them all marked. And if you start that way, you should be organized. It should go really smoothly for you. Um, and now that they have the custom SKU too, it's it's just so much easier. You know, and, and in business too, a lot of businesses will use the SKU for, you know, like the client names and and the numbers for what they're doing or what, what the item is for. So, you know, this can go also beyond eBay. Um, I find it great. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to keep track of where things are or what client is getting what, you know. So, okay. I hope that helps you. And if you'd like me to do any more tutorials on eBay or anything graphic or something you can think about, and I'm happy to share if I know how to do it. And sometimes I just dive in and learn it myself. Hope you like this tutorial. Have an awesome day, everybody. Bye.